Anything you need help with session? I'm just so confused how to actually jig fish. That's why I need your guys' advice. There's so many here, uh, I don't know, even know where to start. Well, there's so many different types of jigs. Well, this is a spider jig, also known as a flipping jig. This is an archie style jig. This guy's a swim jig. And last but not least, we have a football jig. Wow, Rob, this is so confusing. Please, let's sit down and talk about this. In today's tutorial video, we're gonna be talking about jigs and we got RTH fishing with, with us today. He's gonna to be explaining everything that you guys need to know about jigs when it comes to color, tra trailers, all that type, type of stuff. Cause I don't know how to fish jigs, I don't wanna teach you. So he's a <laughs> professional and he knows how to do that. So like I say, we're gonna jump into depth and see how to fish jigs. Ideally, you'd want a heavy action rod, such as we have a 7.4 Intenza, which is a heavy action. The next pretty good option is the Okuma Serrano, 7.4 heavy as well. Same spec, shameless plug. And then a great all purpose jig rod would be the 13 Fishing Fate, 7.1 foot one, medium heavy. So, quick question if I had to throw a finesse jig, very, very light stuff. What would you, what would you recommend? One second. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. Okay, so I'm gonna be buying that rod because it suits me perfectly. For a little bit more finesse fishing, a seven foot medium heavy will be more than sufficient. Reels. Reels. Reels, plain, simple, stupid, eight speed is all you need. Doesn't matter what size, it doesn't matter what uh, brand. As long as it's an eight speed, you're in the money. That's the most ideal. But again, saying that, a six speed and a seven speed will do, will do the job, but an eight speed is the best. We've spoken about the rod, we've spoken about the, the reel. Obviously, you need line, and um, this also obviously just depends on what type of cover you're throwing. Um, you'll go thicker or thinner line, fluorocarbon or braid. That I do know, but um, Rob has his ways of throwing, throwing jigs. So let's hear what he has to say about which line he throws. All right, so I fish very heavy, especially when I'm throwing a flipping jig, I'm throwing a dragging jig, things like that. So I tend to stick to about my, my 20, 25 pound fluorocarbon. On the other side of the spectrum, when I'm throwing my little finesse jigs, my little Ned jigs, my little things like that, I tend to throw about a 12 to 14 pound. But the most ideal line to look for is between a 14 and 16, so 14 pound, 15 pound, 16 pound, anything like that would be your most ideal. Your mono is okay, not great, but okay. Your fluorocarbon is absolutely excellent. And your braid, I would try and stay away from as much as humanly possible while jig fishing. So if I had to choose a line, it would specifically be the Sunline range. That's just the, the preferred brand that I like. Rob obviously has his choi, choi, choice of brand. If it was up to me, I would go for like the 20 pound super, super Sniper here or even the Super Fluoro. This is just a 10 pound at the, mo at the moment, but I would go for like a 20 pound or a 16 pound on my heavier presentations. Um, as Rob said, avoid braid. I didn't know that. So the reason you avoid braid is because it's not as abrasive as a fluorocarbon is. So this means when it rubs up against structure and things like that, other than, say for instance, grass, um, so if it rubs up against like your rocks, your reeds, your things like that, where you want to be throwing a jig, it is going to snap quicker than what fluorocarbon will. Interesting, okay. This is where the fun fun begins. We're gonna start uh, showing, showing you guys up and close the jigs, trailers, and obviously weights and styles of the actual jigs. So let's jump right into that. Okay, so as Rob uh, said, he gave me like an assortment of lures here. As you can see, this is a football jig. This is a spider jig, spider jig, which is a flipping jig, flipping jig, dragon jig, things like that. Then you get a ball style uh, finesse jig. These I do know because I have bought these. Then um, this is a kind of like an archie style head. 
and um, this is a swim jig uh, by Six Sense. I love these things, even though I don't catch very, very often on them. I love the concept of of this of this specific lure. But let's hence why he's here. Exactly. I have brought my jig boxes because I obviously don't want to open up a uh, tackle cabin stock. I'm pretty sure they would have been okay with it, but then I would have had to buy it. <laughs> We're still recording. All right, so first up, we spoke about the spider jig. Now, this one exactly is a hybrid jig from Six Sense. And the reason it's called a spider jig is because of the way that hook sits on that angle. The head is always flat on a spot. And when it's in the water, that skirt flares out like a spider would. The most important thing in jig fishing is the length of the skirt. Do you mind if I take apart your skirts? Go for it. You don't cut it all off. No, no, I won't. The first thing you gotta check is... You do need a bin so that your skirts <laughs> can fall into a bin. And not on the floor. So you'll see that just over here, just behind the hook, is where you need to cut, trim the skirt to. And in doing that, it frees up a lot of space from the jig head and the hook. The next most important thing on a jig would be the trailer. Matching the hatch is obviously the right way to do it. So Correct. try and match the hatch. The body of the, the trailer far or goes way past the, the end of the hook. So what we're gonna do is cut him down just a smidge. Now, essentially the head of the bait to come out the end of the hook. So it's gonna look something like that. So we know to cut off that little chunk right there. In cutting off that chunk, you've taken the end of your bait, which is nice and relatively flat and bullet-like, as it zooms in, and you've turned it into quite the stumpy, which is great for jig fishing. So thread your jigger or your trailer on as straight as possible. As you can see, the flat part is gonna push up against that skirt very well. And it's gonna make it flare even better, yes. And you've turned a little jig from from a flat inline boring nonsense to a much more flared out kind of jig hmm. that is killer what trailer would you suggest for tough fish winter fish fish that aren't really in the mood to bite as everybody knows it it's called lock draw for the fish what trailer would you put on there so currently we're in autumn heading over to winter you for a trailer, you're looking for a bug style trailer. Now you got the Six Sense Prawn, the Sweet Pea from Case Plastics, you got Isilwane from Wolf Lures, you got the X Zone, the Adrenaline Crawls and the Adrenaline Bugs. All these things are absolutely deadly. The reason why we use these is because it has as little action as possible. So, what you do is you take something with a bit of a harder, denser plastic or with a little less movement in the legs and Legs will essentially stick up by themselves and the skirt will do all the action. That is exactly what you want. Where would you specifically throw this? I'm looking for overhanging structure, trees on the edge of the water, undercut banks, little rock piles up against the bank. I prefer throwing the spider jig up shallow as opposed to deep. And yeah, just dragging it slowly off the edge and go from there. Now the other jigs that we that we have in our line lineup, we're going to talk about a football jig. Let Rob explain to you what a football jig is used 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 for, and also to do slight modifications to actually catch more fish. The reason it's called a football, that shape of the head, shaped like an American football, things like that. Now, when people refer to football jigs, you often hear the Americans saying a mop jig. The reason it's a mop jig is because it has a big big skirt. Good trick to do here is to add a second skirt, especially in winter. Why? It's bigger, it's bulkier, it's often darker, and you tend to fish a football jig much deeper. Now, you see it's currently a green pumpkin orange skirt, I'd throw a black blue one behind it because it creates a great contrast, such as, such as that hybrid jig right there. It has a very nice contrast between green pumpkin and black. Football jig, when and why? This, the theory, of the football jig is that uh, once again the football head comes through rock a lot better and hard cover a lot better than any other style of jig as it sits up if you use a floating bait it's also very good as it sits up it tends to roll around on top of rocks and roll off of rocks and things like that and it just makes your life a bit easier fishing deep water 
because the head is so big or so wide you tend to get a much heavier weight for a much smaller profile head and it's great for fishing deep yeah okay what type of trailers uh, would you put put on it again as i said earlier with the skirts the more skirts the better or not really the better but the more skirt the personal preference i prefer is the better um and on a football jig i like to go big like big big again i'm going to trim the skirt down fit it to the hook but it's going to have big appendages things like again the Isilwane, the gary yamamoto cowboy the trench hog even from the guggen squad was got nice big appendages on it um throwing the bandita in there as well and let me show you why big appendages big appendages long appendages okay i didn't know that i would have just put a stroker claw at the back or a, a six cent prawn do you approve of those colors sash i do matching the hatch is super important so once again i've trimmed the top of that bait down and i'm just going to thread it on the hook quickly as straight as possible as straight as humanly sure. possible so here you see i've added a trailer that's got a lot of appendage back there the reason behind that is again you often fish this a bit deeper than what you would a, a flipping jig or a finesse jig or things like that and the more traction you have the better so even though it's got big flapping appendages that are going to keep going even through the dead of winter the more you dead stick it the better but again attraction is key on a football jig i don't really have much ask for a football jig <laughs> awesome when you can't get bit on your bigger can't get bit. i can't but <laughs> if you guys can't can't get bit on a normal style style jig there are finesse presentations like this finesse jig from uh, six cents fishing this is a ball style style head and it's got a smaller skirt it makes it a little bit easier for those tougher bites so let's dive into trailers trimming skirts and all that type of stuff that rob will explain to us all right so here we got the six cents ball jig now when it comes to finesse jigs the top of the skirt generally is cut down super short personally I prefer to cut them down just a bit longer than what the, the, the top is but for the sake of Sasha and not ruining his jigs I'm gonna trim it down just a smidge buckets now the point of a finesse jig it has a very subtle jig or a very subtle skirt rather and that is to do as little as humanly possible in terms of jig trailers you're looking at super boring Sasha's favorite nedry kind of things your small creatures your small crawls um a floating bait is fantastic again on a finesse jig um things we do have in the store would be the x zone net zone uh the reaction plastics uh the crawl the floating crawl and there is a little stick bait that floats from reaction as well just a little stumpy about that big just just past the hook it's all that you need okay so we're not gonna rig that that up um because we don't have the plastics right right now but i'll leave a couple of um links in the description those are all the jigs that are bottom con con contact now the jig that i love the most or want to always catch fish on but never do is the swim jig by six cents this thing is super cool i can throw it out there and burn it you guys know I hate fishing slow, so slow fishing for me is a no-go. So this is just what I like. So yeah, Rob's gonna dive in deeper, what type of tra trailers to be thrown, thrown on the back, and where to throw it and how to throw it. When we refer to a swim jig, we're talking about things, obviously a swim jig itself, this, the same rules apply to a chatterbait, a bladed jig, a spinnerbait. Now, in terms of skirt, this is one of the very few skirts that I leave alone. It's got nice big flareage. When you pulsate the rod and you pop it through the water, you'll see it does a little shimmy in the water. It helps out a lot. In terms of trailers, you got your fast moving trailers, you got your slow moving trailers. Your fast moving trailers are your Kitex uh, paddle tails, your crawl baits, anything with a lot of movement, a lot of appendages, just like the football jig. And then you have your slow stuff, like your flukes believe it or not your 
harder plastic, or your harder plastic paddle tails, like your, your six cents divine. It's got a nice hard tail, that one right there. We would go in your warmer water, that's covered in grass, covered in reeds, you're trying to get in and out the trees, things like that. Anything that's got, or any type of water that's a bit warmer. You want that faster moving stuff, simply because the fish is willing to chase it. When I say chase it, I mean you're trying to imitate the bait fish, you're trying to imitate um, I don't know, a swimming crab or a little muddy on the bottom or things like that. Pretty much all types of fast moving bait fish. Throw that in around cover, structure, things like that because that's, that tends to be where the, those bait fish are hiding. When I say the slow moving plastics such as the six sense divine paddle tail and your fluke, I mean you're trying to, it's your colder water, the fish are a bit more lethargic, they're a bit lazy and you're trying to fish a bit deeper. The difference between the two is the one you can essentially burn, which is the faster stuff, and there should be no reason to slow down at all. Um, but when it gets a bit colder, you throw the the, paddle, or the, the swim jig with a, a harder plastic or a slower plastic, like a fluke, because they get the fish get a bit lazy and they don't really feel like chasing and things like that. That tends to be the better time to throw it. Now for the rigging. All right, so this is the most crucial thing to put on straight. If your paddle tail is crooked, your bait's gonna run crooked, or your, your craw is crooked, whatever trailer you have, if it's crooked, it's gonna run crooked. That simple. And again, I don't do a lot of modifications to the swim jigs or my trailers. It is not exactly necessary, and I'll show you why when I'm finished. Well, while, while we're waiting here for Rob to rig up this, this paddle tail, leave comments down, down below what you guys, or what other tutorials you guys wanna see with Rob that I haven't touched and um, yeah hit that hit that thumbs up so the only trick i can really give you on a trailer on a uh, swim jig is just rig the paddle tail upside down oh. it gives it a slightly different kick as to what uh, you normally you see and that sometimes generates a bite because it's something slightly different that the fish aren't skied in on they haven't seen it a lot things like that well off this video they might and yeah Again, it's not very straight, terrible example. Try keep that thing as straight as humanly possible. We've covered a wide variety of jigs. Now, you guys are most probably wondering what colors do, do you throw? So this is where, I, personal opinion, I like to throw everything natural colors. So green pumpkins, um, bluegill colors, Baitfish colors, white. I don't even throw white that much, but Rob will enlighten you guys on what colors to throw in which type of situation. So when it comes to jig fishing, I'm a big, or fishing in general, I'm a big fan of watermelon and I'm a big fan of green pumpkin. When I'm throwing jigs specifically, I'm looking to throw in clear water, a watermelon something. And it can be watermelon pink, watermelon orange, watermelon purple. I just like that slightly, slightly different something. I don't like the plain watermelon seeds. I think they're a bit dull, a bit boring. And if you look at a small bait fish or a little something that the, that the bass eats, it generally has a bit more sheen than just a plain boring color. When I'm going to dirty water, I love my green pumpkins. And again, it's gonna be green pumpkin orange is probably my favorites, but green pumpkin reds, green pumpkin purples, green pumpkin blacks, anything like that. So can is. I interrupt you here? So when you're talking dirty water, are you talking stained dirty water or are you taking talking chocolate milk dirty so water? I'm talking about stained, silty, boring water that you think that the fish are not going to be there. And I promise you 90% of the time they are. Um, and when I'm talking chocolate milk, it's got to be my favorite absolute go to is black blue. But there are black blue purples, there are black purples, there are black reds, black chartreuses, black whites. Go crazy doesn't really matter what that second color is as long as you base those first three so the watermelon the green pumpkin and the black on those specific kinds of waterways there you have it so now you've got a 101 rob and myself on how to jig 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 fish i've learned a lot today i i do know about some tricks but i would have never have rigged a swim swim bait trailer upside down <laughs> i would have never have done that with that finesse jig i would have never have cut it that short because why do they sell you the jigs uncut 
Um, everybody obviously has has their own way of fishing their jigs and this is the way Rob fishes, fishes his jigs and he has success. I have seen him catch jigs which I don't do that much. So that's why I needed some, some advice and I hope this is also um, answered some of your questions at home so if you guys do want to go and purchase all these baits that we've described today i'll leave everything linked down down below tackle cabin has stock of everything and um, they got a whole variety of everything thanks rob <laughs> i do appreciate uh, you helping out and actually being being a guest on my channel um, check out Rob's channel RTH Fishing. I'll leave that link link down down below. I would really appreciate it if you guys actually went over and subscribed to to his channel. He's a up and coming YouTuber. His <laughs> content is actually really really good, and he fishes really really well. Yes, but he's <laughs> he's really really funny, and uh, we we always have a blast, and we can chat for hours. So leave comments down below if you guys want to see more collab co collaborations of us actually going going out fishing, more challenges. So yeah, hit that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode of Bassing with Sasha. Go big and go fishing. Peace.